So Doug, why is it important to set the intention to heal? It's important to set the intention to heal because setting the intention to heal is the starting point of all mental health recovery. Let me say that again. Setting the intention to heal, the decision to heal, the decision to get well, the commitment to get well is where it all starts. Now, for my friends and family members who have dealt with addiction, uh, it's the same thing because when you go to an AA meeting, Alcoholics Anonymous, and you want to go and, and get help with your alcoholism or your addiction, the only requirement to get in is a sincere desire to stop drinking. Once an addict makes that desire, I want to quit, says that desire, I want to quit, has that desire, things change. When the depressive, when the person suffering from anxiety says, I want to get better, I don't know how I'm going to get better, but I want to get better, then things start to shift because a certain energy or force is set into motion. Actually, two forces. One is the body's own healing mechanism. You know, we have a physical immune system. When you get cut, uh, the blood clots, a scab forms on your arm or whatever, and you start to heal. The same thing is true of a psychological immune system. Well, that psychological immune system gets activated when it knows at a deep level that you really want to get well and feel better. The second thing that happens besides an activation of the healing mechanism within you, is that something metaphysical almost, that you start to attract the people, the circumstances, the resources that will contribute to your wellness. Why is this so? Because I believe the universe is basically a friendly place. You know, on his deathbed, Albert Einstein said, there's only one question, is the universe friendly? That's an amazing thing. One of the, the smartest men of the 20th century said that, is the universe friendly? Well, my experience and the experience of the hundreds and hundreds of people I've worked with, the answer to that question is yes. Because when I made the decision to get well, when I said, I want to get out of this depression so badly, I'm committing all of my energy and focus into this, then angels start to show up in my life. People start to help me in all ways I never would have imagined. That's what setting the intention to do does. It brings in the grace and the help from the universe, from God, from whatever, that's going to support you in your healing. Does setting the intention to heal mean that a person must know how he's going to heal? Not at all. You know, when you remember when you were, uh, I first met you and you were really struggling? Uh, very few times when a person is in the dark night of the soul, I mean, they can barely see, you know, a minute or two ahead. You can't possibly imagine how you're going to get well in most of those circumstances. But you do know one thing, you want to get well. So you just have to have the desire and the universe will handle the details and showing you the way to get better. So you don't have to have the end in mind yet. I mean, you have to have the end in mind, which is you want to get better. You want to go from point A to point B, but you don't have to know yet how you're going to get there. What is the vision statement of wellness and, and how is it a part of this process? Well, the vision statement is, is the tool to get you from point A to point B, from being depressed to being joyful, to mental illness to mental health recovery. And I'm going to read to you what I have in my book, exactly what a vision statement is. Now, it's based on a very simple principle that Stephen Covey wrote about in a book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Covey said, begin with the end in mind. Begin with the end in mind. Why do you want to do that? Because you see, in the universe, all things are created twice. First in the mind, in the world of thought, and then in the outer world. If we look around this, this room here, I see a chair over there. That started out as a thought in someone's mind. It didn't just appear accidentally. You know, there's a couch over here. There's you know, lighting over here. There's a camera over there. All of these things first started out in the world of thought. It's the same thing with mental health recovery. So the essence of the vision statement is this. You ask yourself the question, what would your life look and feel like if you were living with an absence of symptoms and in full mental health recovery? And here, here are some of the questions you want to ask yourself. What would my body look and feel like? How much energy would I have available to me if I were well? What would I be feeling like most of the time? What types of thoughts would I be thinking? What types of relationships would I have? What kind of work would I be involved in? What kind of spiritual life would I have? Now, drawing upon the answer to these questions, what you're supposed to do is in a page, not a page, a paragraph, a paragraph, one or two paragraphs, describe in specifics, if you can, the vision of what this wellness would look like. See if you can use all your five senses, your sight, your hearing, your touch, your smell, and your taste to depict your experience. Set this thing down in the present tense as if it were happening right now. Now, again, you may not believe that getting well is possible. You may not know how to get there, but you can at least imagine what it might be like. And you know, if you can't even think back to a time when you felt really good, 
just say to yourself something like, I just want to feel my life force again. I just want to feel better. That is enough of a vision statement to get yourself started. Once you've created your vision statement, what is the next step to take? The next step is to let that vision statement have a, a chance to really kind of be a part of your life and to seep into your subconscious mind. And this means whether it's two lines, a paragraph, or a full page, reading it to yourself every day, preferably when you get up in the morning and before you go to sleep at night, because these are the times when your subconscious mind is most open to suggestion. And if you do this day after day, week after week, month after month, you'll start to notice something as happened with, has happened with all the people in my group. You'll start to notice that over time, this vision statement will start to manifest in your life, whether it takes three months or six months or nine months. And I've noticed in the groups I run that the people who take this the most seriously, the people who really get into it, the people who are committed to reciting their vision statement and to really focusing on it, there's, those are the ones who get well the quickest. Because uh, a very famous science fiction writer named Richard Matheson just died. And he, uh, his favorite uh, quote that he kept on his mantelpiece was, what you think about becomes your world. And that is true of the vision statement. What you think about becomes your world. If you think about mental health recovery and make that a focus of your life and a commitment, it will in fact happen.